Okay. So, Clock in the Gallop are tuned in to Gavin Lorena now. We've decided that um, it was about time that we settled in and chatted uh, uh, man to man to Gavin Lorena. Um, we know Gavin quite a bit uh, through our Clock in the Gallop travels. We've had good fun with him all over the country. And he joins us now live from his home in Johannesburg. Gavin, great to have you on the show again. Thanks for joining us just a few days before the, the Summer Cup on Saturday. Thank you very much, Nico. Great to be on the show. And uh, let's hopefully we can guide the, the punters in the right direction. I want to talk quickly about soccer first, because we were just talking about it before we came on. You have Argentinian heritage. Um, you, you know, your your forefathers came out from Argentina to South Africa. Um, a strong breed of Argentinian family are the Lorinas. Um, I'm supporting Argentina. They had a bit of a hiccup in their first game. But I said to everyone, it, it, it's good news because we get a better price for the for the, <laughs> the lift the cup, you know? <laughs> yeah, look, it was quite depressing uh, to see them get beaten. I think they hadn't been beaten in their last 36 games or something. Stupid yeah, like that. amazing. But, uh, that's why there's no such thing as a good thing. Yeah. But I did draw Saudi Arabia um, with a couple of my mates who drew teams and yeah, they were so one of my teams. So it was a bittersweet victory. <laughs> yeah, so you don't, you want them to win, but you don't want them to win at the same time. So <laughs> we'll we'll hope for the best for Ar Argentina. Um, now, Gav, I noticed only five rides on the day. Um, I want to leave the Summer Cup to last because that's the biggest of all and, and we'll get into a meteor discussion on those. But you have four other mounts on the day. So if we can just quickly run through them. In race five, you've got full velocity running for Sean Terry. And and she's as, as consistent as ever, isn't she? You've ridden her last time out. And, I mean, it was short heads. I, you know, we, we, we like full velocity. We thought she'd, she'd go really close. And she gave the other filly seven and a half kilos. Yeah, it was a huge run last time. Um, I must say, uh, at the start... Um, I think three quarters of the field of jocks thought it was a false start because um, that little filly, uh, Lucy in the Sky, broke the gate. Yeah. So we came out, took hold, and look, I probably would have ended up in the same place, but it does cost you. But um, yeah. You know, to run with that weight last time, uh, she was gallant. She ran a fantastic place. So she's uh, going back up the straight, and uh, she's done extremely well up the straight. Nothing to suggest that she, she can't be. Uh, out, the, out the first few, at least. Yeah, I mean, you know, course and distance statistics are, are really good. And uh, I think she enjoys the turf and things straight. You know, she's got a nice draw. Um, I'm not right on the fence, so I'll be able to, to get out at the right time. And uh, I, think, I think she's going to run on strongly. Yeah, I think she's a big runner there uh, to open up your day. Then we go to the Dingons, where you've got the ride on Meridius. Again, another one that we rode last time out. What sort of feel did he give you last time over the 1800? You know, he gave me a very nice feel. Uh, he's, a, he's a horse that moves really well. Um, he does feel to me that he's, he's going to be better in a couple of months' time. Mm. You know, mentally, the, the penny really hasn't dropped with him. But we've got the blinkers on him now. And hopefully that will just help him concentrate that a little bit better. You know, when did you, did you suggest those or did, did Andrew and Ashley say, you know, do you mind us putting them on or trying them or did you suggest putting them on? Yeah, look, uh, we, we chatted about it and, you know, I suggested maybe a, a, a sheepskin noseband or, or the blinkers and, uh, you know, they're pretty happy to, to go with the blinkers. So, yeah. you know, let's just hope, hope it helps him concentrate a little bit better because he, he does have the ability. Who's your gut feel for in that race? Would it be Shoemaker because of uh, his traffic issues last time out that he that he mightn't have won last time if he didn't get get a few traffic issues? Would that be your idea of the Dingons winner? You know, it's, yes, he was unlucky last time. Um, wherever Richard went, he, he got squeezed. Uh, but I think that the horse Union Square uh, from the one draw, he also ran a fantastic race. And I think his horse has... Going to keep getting better. Yes. Um, but I think it is quite an open race. Uh, you know, he got a real victory. He, yeah, I mean, he also he ran a fantastic race last time. Yeah. Make them quite... it's, I think it's going to be a good good race. And then you've got a couple of horses that fluff their lines, like Profit and that, 
Yeah, yeah. hoping I'm sure hoping to to come back to to yeah. perform. Okay, so no clear cut um, choice there for Gavin, but he's got a ticket there with Meridius. Then in the eighth race, um, perfect witness. Well, um, at the weights last time out, she looked to have an absolutely huge chance, um, and and that was in the victory moon. But she she didn't run any kind of race. I you know, they said they examined her, nothing else was found out. Now, what have you found out about her that you can say might have accounted for that bad run last time? Is there anything in your mind? And um, speaking to Candice, that, that that you've come up with that, that might have led to that poor run. Yeah, look, it was a very poor run. But uh, speaking to Candice, as uh, she thought maybe with all the rain in that, that uh, you know she she had a bit more bit more pudding than she wanted on the filly. Um, I did some nice work with her last season, and the more work we gave her, the better she was. Uh, she just. The more work we threw at her, she she thrived off it. So, you know, Candice has put another two grass gallops into her now. And uh, she's stripping a fitter horse. I still can't say she's 100%, but she's yeah. definitely stripped a, a fitter horse. Um, she's she's a very nice filly. She's, yeah. she's honest. Very nice. I mean, we tipped her strongly on this channel last time out. So we, we were dumbfounded. But but like you say, it didn't work out for her. So, we, we, you know, it's like we weren't even close to winning. Uh, the point is that she needs to get her head in front because she's the type of horse that if she doesn't win soon, she'll continue running seconds or thirds. But if you look at that run to Puerto Manzano, I mean, that was a tremendous effort in the Jubilee. Um, if you go to that run, she's got to have a big chance here. But as you say, she needs to regain that form. Yeah, 100%. Look, I think her best distance is probably 10 furlongs. Yeah. But I mean, uh, last year I rode in the, the Phillies Classic and she ran a great third to, to rain in Harlem. Yeah. And she followed up and ran a great second. So, yeah. you know, I think, uh, she's a very honest filly. And, you know, the harder you are, her, the, the harder she tries. So, okay. I think she'll be in with a small chance. That uh, perfect witness in the eighth race, which is the Epitome Challenge. And then the last of the day, you've got Dawn of a New Era. Um, you and uh, Erica go back a long way, and you've had a lot of success with each other. Um, you get back aboard this horse, and you've ridden it a few times. You never won on him, but um, you've run him into the placings. If people are doing their Tom in the last, can Gavin pop up in the last? You know, it's funny enough you say that often on the big days, I end up riding a horse for, for Erika in the last race. And for some reason, they come home from the Nordic Rebels to mm. Barnett Tasna those days. Uh, we've had some good success in the last race. And uh, look, let's just hope it all comes together. Um, you know, it's, it's a small field, but there's some competitive runners here. Yeah? But one thing I do know, he'll, he'll be running on strongly. Well, I remarked on this channel um, a few weeks back um, uh, just how well Erico's done. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of horses. And when you looked at his his stats, I mean, I then I then turned around and said, I mean, I labeled a horse, actually, and it was a yeah. great price. Um, it was one of Suzette for Lyon's horses. And it, 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 it well, I can use the, the, the terminology because we're on the 18 channel. It's chatted. Um, which was great news for us because uh, it was a great price. So he, he's done extremely, he's a real horseman, isn't he, Erica? He's a fantastic horseman. He's a great trainer, a good horseman. I think he's got, I think he's got 18 horses or so, mm. 14 to 18 horses. Um, but he's just a really good trainer. And, he, you know, he gives his horses the time, time to mature. And you look at a horse like, like Nordic Gravel, he had Caribbean Coast. They race until they're seven, eight, nine years old, and, and they race competitively. Yeah. Um, I wish he would get more support because uh, he deserves it. Yeah. No, I agree with you wholeheartedly that he's been a long time in the game. I remember him years ago training that horse Fallon. I think he ended up with uh, Joey Soma, but I think he had it initially. Yeah, I think he went to Gorns with it, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Yeah, I think it was. Okay, he's so let's go. Way. Let's go back a bit to to the big race, uh, the Betway Summer Cup. And I, I I was doing my homework. Okay, so we've got nineteen runners, and I wanted to to hear it from Gavin. So because now you've ridden at some stage rather than the career half the field. You haven't ridden half the field ever before. You might have ridden them at work, but in a race you haven't ridden half the field. But you have <laughs> ridden half of them. Um. Now let's start off with with second base because we've had a quick chat um a couple of weeks ago. 
about what you were likely going to write. Um, Johan, in his interview, said, look, it's drawn 18, but I'm quite happy in a way that he's drawn 18 because um, it'll suit us better with this horse. Do you, are you in that same, um, are, you, are you of that same opinion that it's better to be drawn there? I am, I am, because, you know, he, he's a horse that doesn't break very well. And he often can't muster the, the early speed. So if he gets a good draw, he gets bumped around and he ends up too far back. But from the draw 18, you know, if he doesn't come out quick, I'll be able to let him use his action for a bit and, and then find myself um, where he's happy. So I'm not very disappointed in the draw. I have won from that draw before. <laughs> Yes, you have. I'm saying that you can win from those draws at that turf and team 2000. It's not a negative. Uh, people think, sorry, these birds are going to create a bit of problem for us <laughs> in the background. But but I'm saying people moan about the draws, but at the end of the day, it's not a bad thing. You know, I think, yes, in a, in, in a mediocre race, a draw can get you. But uh, when you go to, to group one level and hopefully there's a strong pace, the draw doesn't, you know, come into factor when when there's eighteen decent horses running and there's a strong pace. You know, you you'll find your way, and you know the good horses can can get up. Um, it's a race that um, you know, not much pressure is on you. He's fifty to one. He's sixty six to one second base. Last year, when Neil and I did the form, we ended up backing two horses. We ended up backing him. Um, and we ended up backing the winner, Flying Carpet, because we were looking for something in that profile of horse um, to just fit the bill. Uh, I think Raymond uh, Danielson rode him in last year's race. Um, my point is that without without a lot of pressure on you, the Gavin Arena I know, um, regardless of what you're riding, wants to give it your best shot. It doesn't matter the price of the horse. You want to win the Summer Cup. 100%. Um, you know what, like you said, there's no pressure on me. I think I think he's going to enjoy a no-pressure ride this horse. Yeah. And I'm going to give him a no-pressure ride. You know? you know, it's all up to him at the end of the day. But if he puts his best foot forward with the weight that he's carrying, he's got to be competitive. Let's talk about the Johan Janssen van Furen stable because um, very recently, I'd say... By recent, I mean in the last six to nine months, you've got back in the yard. Um, if we think back this time last year, things might have been not as rosy. My point being is that you're there, you're in the mix, and you're enjoying your time there. You had a cracking win yesterday in that first race with a stable companion. Um, it was really a top-class ride by you. Um, so you're in the system there, and you, you, you're obviously accustomed to riding all these horses at work. I mean, they're all they're all decent. I mean, you'd have to say of the stable, though, that Keegan's right. Puerto Manzano is the key. The question mark that everyone's throwing back at me is that he's not going to get the trip. That 2,000 metres is just a little bit further than than he, he'd like. But I don't share that same sentiment. Um, I saw him running on to Bingwa in the charity mile, and he was pulling away from the third horse. Um, and the fourth horse in that last 200. I'm thinking that it's not such a negative as people are making out to be. Would you agree with that? You know, at, um, at work, he's doing unbelievably well, uh, Pietro. Um, yeah, I'm kind of him in a better space. He's moving really well. And on his work, I can, I can say whatever beats him is going to win. Um, Distance-wise, I would say it's his top end. But at level weight, he ran a great third in the in the 2000 um, last season. Um, is it the president's? Yes, the president's challenge. Yeah. Third yeah. fifteen at level weight, uh, he ran a fantastic race over the 2000. And then in the summer cup last year, you know he was drawn wide. He went forward in the race, uh, used up quite a bit of energy, and still ran a great race. Yeah, I think he only got beaten two or two and a half lengths. So. I think if Keegan gives him a conservative route, this also he'll finish strongly. Yeah. He's got uh, Asterix as well in the race, who's now recently changed stables. That's also with you. And you've ridden that horse before, so you know what he feels like um, also. 
And then you've got Divine Odyssey, the horse that went down to the Eastern Cape and is back uh, back in Joburg now. Um, how are they doing? Have you ridden them at work? Yeah, I haven't sat on Divine Odyssey. Uh, obviously, he's back from uh, from uh, PE. But, um, you know, it's his third run back in on the half felt. And it wasn't such a bad run last time. You know, he, he stayed on and obviously, uh, you know, Jan's got some more work into him. So, you know, he, he could be a dark horse. Uh, but Asterix, I have done a bit of work on him. Um, obviously, it's his third run for Jan. He's run over the two miles and he's probably better over the 10 third miles. Um, He's got him moving well at home, but it's hard with 60 kilos in, in these races giving giving weight to it. Let's talk about the top two in the market. Mike de Kock, uh, looking for his 10th win in the big race, has got the two favourites, Sparkling Water, Safe Passage. Lots of form to go on. Um, you know, of the two, uh, my personal preference of the two is Sparkling Water, as it was in the July. Um, I just feel that um, even though she's giving half a kilo to Safe Passage, that that for me she'll beat Safe Passage. But what's your feeling? You know, I, I, I just you know you you see horses run and you see, I mean they both came from a rest last time. Mm. You know, Safe Passage made up good good ground, and he he obviously just needed it that last hundred or so. And then you get Sparkling Water, who jumped from a wide draw. She was on the pace. It was a very hard run for her down the straight. Um, you've got to take those things into account. I, I prefer Sad Passages Prep. Um, you know, the mile and then going the 10 furlongs. I, th I, th I think he's the right horse. For me, Sad Passage is the right horse. Sparkling Water, she ran a great race last time. Obviously, she was brilliant in the July. But it was a hard first run back. Um, you know, and with the mates, it's, it's not easy. Mm. Um, De Cox also got Aragosta in the race. Now, I'm going back to the July. In the July, I liked both Aragosta and Sparkling Water. We know that Warren Kennedy, I think, rode Aragosta, and it, things didn't work out. He only finished six lengths back that said. He has a horse that will love being back at Turfentine over this type of ground. He's got Richard Ferry in the saddle, bang in form. Um, blinkers last time out. No blinkers on this time round. So if we ignore that run, if you go back to that run in the Dingons last year, and I know it's over a mile and I know it's when they were three-year-olds, but, you know, they, there wasn't much between the safe passage and the and the Aragosta on their run. And and the one has to give the other three kilos as, as four-year-olds. Yeah, look, I, I think Aragosta is, is well-weighted. Um, obviously, I rode him twice uh, early in his career. Um, he won a good race and he ran a good third, I think it was the Dingons. That was the Dingons, yeah. Um, yeah. I, f I feel he's probably uh, 10 furlongs at Turfentine is probably his best course in distance. Um, I'm not sure about the blinkers on, blinkers off, but uh, he is definitely a dark horse. Uh, he's, his form suggests this, you know, he's, I mean, even his run in the Daily News was, was a great run off the rest. So, you know, if things go well for him in the race, he, he could also be running on last. Yeah, strangely enough, of the Decock runners, he's actually the top of my pile in the Decock camp. Um, again, I'm not looking specifically to go for value, but I, I, I tipped Aragosta ahead of Sparkly Water in the July. Why would I be uh, different just a few months later? I then want to touch on a couple of your fellow riders. Firstly, let's talk about Julius Mariba and how well he's ridden Red Saxon, and the fact that Joey has gravitated back to Julius to give him a ride in this big race. Um, because, you know, when you look back at the form, the best his best rider has been Mariba. Yeah. Without a doubt. Um, you know, I think he was a horse that used to, to pull quite hard uh, when he was younger. And uh, Julius actually taught him to settle very nicely and, and to run with them. So I think it's a smart move by... By Mr. Soma to have uh, his little son back, Julius. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, there was a great run from him last time as well. Um, yeah. 
So I'm sure he's got to be in with a chance. Yeah. And um, the problem is, if Julius wins the Summer Cup, I don't know whether we'll get out of there much before Monday. Um, but that's <laughs> something that I'll take up with Julius at some stage. Let's talk about Straden. Okay. Now, there is racing tomorrow um, at the Val, and Pierre's just won away from that 5,500. I know Pierre probably a bit less than well that no, known that you know him. Um, he would relish the fact of winning this race to, to to put the you know put the trophy in the cabinet and say that was his five thousand five hundredth winner. He'd won a win on Nebros, and again he has a profile of a horse comes and I think the weight's a little bit on the on the on the uh, on the um, heavy side, but fifty seven is a nice galloping weight that can win it. Without a doubt. Uh... He was running on very well late in the victory room. This was uh, actually caught my eye. And uh, if I wasn't going to ride second base, I probably would have tried to push from the brass. Uh, I think he's got a big chance this horse. You know, if the pace is strong, if it's a hard run 2000, you know, this horse has got the stamina and he's got a good turn of foot as well. Obviously, over a longer trip, but yes. if it's a hard run 2000, a tough one, this horse has got the stamina to get to the line. He can he can outrun them. Um, those that are, the, those like Porter Manzano that are on the top end of the trip, you know, they'll be stopping where he's flying and still wants an yeah. extra two three hundred. You know, but yeah. let's stay with Sean Terry and the Sean Terry theme. He's won this race lots of times before too. He 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 won last year's race. He's also got a previous winner race, Zilzal. He's got Shango, who you've ridden a few times. You know him, but he's got litigation. He's got pyromaniac. What about Terry's Terry's form going into the race and his chances in the race? You know, if I go back on the years, um, I don't know why, but uh, November day always catches Mr. Terry out. <laughs> but he comes back on the Summer Cup day and he reminds us who he is. So, yeah, I wouldn't write any of his horses off. Um, I've won on Zilzal before. Um, he's got a big, beautiful action, this horse, and uh, he carries himself very well. He's got the draw. I hope he, he goes forward because he, he likes to get at this horse. He likes to use his action. So, yeah, you leave Sean Terry out at your own peril. Mm. Um, litigation, obviously, also one of him. Um, he's a horse that's improving. He, uh, well done to the kid last time for riding him. He rode a great race, a positive race on him. Mm. And I think that was also like that type of ride. Uh, he, he just wants to keep on winding. And um, yeah, look, it was a, I mean, it was a, a long odds last time, but it was a good win. It was a good win for him. And then who's the other one again? Um, uh, the other one was Pyromania. Oh, Pyromania. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, Pyromania. I think the 2000 is too far for him. I really, I, I, I think he's a he's a decent mile on his day if things go his way. But I personally think 2000 meters is too far for him. And then Shango. Sure, Shango. I rode him last time for, for Mr. Terry, and I, I actually said to him, I think, yes, at Gravel, uh, the long distances suits him. But I think at Turf and Teen and you know, with the incline and that, I think 2000 is probably his top end. Yeah. Um, he's also, also he's got he's got stamina on his on, on his. Oh, sorry. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Yeah. I mean, he, obviously he's running the Gold Cups and his long distance races in uh, in in Durban. But I think the 2000 will probably be. Be his best trip at, at Turf and Team. He needed his last start, and uh, yeah, it's also another dark horse. Great for Rachel to get a ride in the race. Absolutely. One last question on the runners before I tie you down to something. Um, William Robertson. Now, you know, it was well documented the day of that top bet race, the, the spring challenge, when Kamala got off him at the start, said he didn't feel that he was right on the day Yeni rode him Yeni said to me after the uh, race had run that although he won on him uh, he wasn't comfortable on him 
Um, what's the story with with um, his his new rider now, Marco van Rensburg? Because um, he, he's got it all to do here, but people have left him out and he's popped up. He's got to be a damn good horse at if he, if he's running so close up and people are wary of his action. Yeah, he's a. If you look at him in the ring, he's a big, beautiful, strong horse. I just don't know if ten furlongs is the right trip for him. I, th I thought myself personally, I thought he's probably the best in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two thousand. Yeah, so two thousand meters just uh, may catch him out here. Yeah. I think so. I think if they stuck to the sprinting distances, I think this was good. The sky could be the limit. Now, final question. Riding second base from an 18 draw, how often do you go through the plan of action in the race um, in your head, looking at the, where the rest are drawn and who you're going to follow? I know that's what jockeys do. They they choose a horse to follow, a uh, fancy yeah. horse that they think has got a chance after doing their studying of form, and you're well equipped to doing that. So in your mind... Um, you know how you're going to ride your race. Is it going to work out for you? Are you are you are you comfortable that you've got your own correct strategy to ride second base to its best finish possible? I do, I do. Obviously, I've got the horses in mind that I want to follow. Um, if I could be just while I'm midfield, it would be great. But I may have to be further back. But um, if I can get the the two horses that I want to following the straights, get them to pull me through. Um, let's hope you can surprise us. Well, we would look absolutely brilliant uh, four days before tipping a 55 or 66 to one horse um, uh, to run up there in the Summer Cup. So let's hope it comes to pass. We've had good form together previously. Um, I'm not saying it's our outright first selection, but it's definitely on the short list of horses we've got for it, and hence the reason why we've got you on. One final thing, and you must be so proud of your lovely wife um, because she's back in the saddle tomorrow. And I'm putting this out tonight because when I was doing looking at tomorrow's card, I just see a, um, an Asterix Vicky Larina um, in a work riders race, obviously prepping herself for the big ladies race coming up on, on King's Plate Day. But it's magnificent for her to get back in the saddle. How's she feeling? Yeah, she's obviously a little bit nervous. Um, but she's a great driver, she's a great horsewoman, and uh, she's got wonderful hands on the horse. Obviously, this is a prep race for, for, for like you said, for that race on, on King's Plate Day. But uh, she's been putting in the yards, she's been doing a lot of running, uh, riding as many horses as she can in the mornings. So, it's, I think it's going to be good. I was actually on the scratchings last week, and I saw Joe because obviously I ran second. A couple of runs back on this princess, uh, yeah. this horse that she's riding. And I saw, saw Joe double engaged, and he obviously has to ride for Sean Taddy. So I told her, get on the phone. This is this is a nice comeback ride. Cause so you, you're giving I a bit think. back that she does for you. I mean, doesn't she normally do that for you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah she helps me out big time with my rides, um, gets hold of the trainers. But yeah, let's hope uh, she'll pay me some agent fees. Yeah, well, let's hope that she gets into that winner's enclosure and plays the factory. But well done to her and well done for her to come back. Gavin, um, always a pleasure having you on our show. Um, we speak quite a bit when we're on planes and at airports and, and so forth. But always a pleasure having you in a formal conversation here talking racing. I just hope it goes fine for you. You know, you said to me a couple of weeks back, Nico, um, he's the type of horse second base. That if he could put in his best form, not that he does now that he's getting older, he doesn't run two races alike, but... He could flash up on the day. And I'm hoping for you and for us young clock in the gallop that he that he just runs his best race. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's all up to him at the end of the day. And uh, he's certainly got the ability. He's certainly putting in great work at home. He's moving well. So it's, let's hope the base can, can come into home run. <laughs> See what happens. And um, all the best to you, Gab. We'll, we'll catch you on... Uh, on Saturday at Summer Cup Day. But thanks very much for chatting to us. Thank you very much. Great to be on the show. Thanks very much. Cheers.